the whole point of an intervention may be to slow down our way of thinking, to disrupt the kind of automatic behaviors and make us aware of what's going on. And that's kind of what you get with um, maybe things around cooling off periods uh, for consumer protection um, or violence reduction programs that try to stop people's initial uh, responses to a situation. And we're doing work, uh, for example, on reducing violence against uh, bus drivers through de-escalation. You may also be helping people to learn effective rules of thumb, mental shortcuts, which operate on that automatic system. And there's plenty of evidence that can work really well. Um, there's a, a nice study we talk about in terms of helping entrepreneurs um, develop kind of new uh, ways of keeping track of their business cash um, using simple heuristics. And then people also talk about, well, okay, what about transparency if you're concerned about things operating by stealth. And there are these ideas around, should you think about whether you'd be comfortable talking about this in public and making, um, uh, making and then the proposal of making all interventions public before they happen so people can uh, critique them. The problem is that it's not very easy to understand how they'll operate in practice. Um, and, you know, that people may have the tendency to think, oh yeah, people will be fine with this um, if we, you know, if I announced it today. Um, and that's the kind of like self-serving bias you may get because you're, you're motivated to think everyone will, everyone will be fine with this. Instead, I don't think that's enough. I think the, the stuff I've talked about in the slide, it doesn't get to the heart of everything. It, 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 it provides some uh, pushback, but I think we need to go further to see what's going on here. And that's why um, we, set out this kind of way of thinking about um, the ethics of, of, of how you might nudge or, or use behavioral science. And it comes in two parts. On the one hand, you've got um, the, the manipulation side of things, you know, how an intervention works, is something manipulative or is, is there no cause for concern? And the other side, paternalism. In other words, what's, what behavior are we talk about? What behavior is being influenced? And is that influence justified? And so um, in terms of manipulation, you, you think about level of control, like how easy is it to resist an intervention and level of transparency, how clear are the intervention's existence intent mechanisms? And on the paternalism side, what, what are the consequences involved? What are the harms and benefits and who is affected by them? And then what are people's, what, what is the strength of people's preferences? How strong and settled are those preferences? And just to go through these quickly, if you think about level of control, this is often seen in a kind of ladder of increasing restrictions about how much control people have. And it, it's seen as going, say, from providing information uh, at, at the bottom uh, to all the way up to eliminating choice uh, at the top with various things in between. And I think what's worth saying here is it's not just a question of the ladder, it's also how you, how you work within these different rungs of the ladder. So information is not a simple thing. It's not, it's not a homogeneous thing. It can go all the way from, say, posting nutritional data on a government website to a more intrusive kind of highly visible unpack labeling with government advertising uh, backing up and you know, packs provided to, to schools and so on. So information, you know, even within that rung, there's the ways you can use behavioral science to make it more or less, um, uh, you know, with different levels of intensity, I suppose. 